all right hello everyone and peace of christ to all of you please invite your friends and share the link with all friends you have uh always we hear muslims saying to us especially you know the hypocrites ones like the nigerian generation of hypocrisy when they uh, speak to us anything anytime you mention something to them embarrassing or will get Islam busted we say to you we don't agree with hadith and I find it very very stupid uh, move from those who say that the second you hear a Muslim saying I don't agree with the hadith it's mean I don't agree with myself No Muslim in the world have little dignity and say I reject hadith. And the one who have little dignity, he will play a different game. He will say, I don't reject, I don't accept this hadith. Another way, any hadith is embarrassing. They say we reject it. Everybody knows that the real Islam is that you cannot reject what it's called Sunnah, and Sunnah simply is what is what Muhammad he did and the practice and he said uh, the fact if you reject the Sunnah you became a Kafir and there is many uh, let us say articles written about these issues and it make it so clear that you cannot be a Muslim and you say I reject the Sunnah or the Hadith it's the same you are saying you claim to be Christian but you reject the Trinity in Christianity the second you say I don't accept the Trinity then you are no Christian as simple as that and actually uh, hadith in Islam is everything because for those who do not know even the Quran itself is nothing but a collection of hadith hadith mean a speech for those who do not know what hadith mean as simple as that and the Quran itself you see I choose this picture actually in front of me in the screen because this picture is like it's like uh, it's like the Quran in your hand uh, it's kind of a flight of thoughts it's kind of puzzles and every Muslim try to make it his own way so you can fill up those spaces with any uh, any letters fill in the space and sometimes the possibility it can be endless it's just about how many words you know in your brain dictionary the Muslims will try to understand their cult after all the understanding they come to the conclusion that nobody understand what Islam is about no Muslim knows who is Allah no Muslim knows what the Quran is saying no, no Muslim can even dare to say I can explain the Quran this is why you see the Muslims after they explain the Quran they say Allah knows best and none of those who explain the Quran claim that he explained the Quran he will say and they call it in Arabic ishtihad uh, which means I am doing my best but it's not not necessarily to be true all right it's not necessarily to be true Uh, we can find 
in the Quran many evidence and this is actually what what the Muslim scholars they use to prove uh, that you cannot reject the hadith but the important is that lately we start noticing that Muslims saying that even Quran is weak or Quran is rejected and even they start saying that the Quran today is not authentic in order to avoid problems in the in, in this mad book so now we have Muslims rejecting the hadith which was not really the case for hundreds of years but now because after you know we start exposing the stupidity of the hadith right away they jump to deny the hadith and say we don't believe in them then we start deny, you know the, the exposing the stupidity of the Quran so now generation of Muslims start saying I don't believe in this garbage but I Islam is the truth <clears throat> so he don't believe in the Quran but yet Islam is the truth the Quran which he have in his hand is not the guidance to Islam no more the hadith is just a collection of stupid stories so how you can be a Muslim but you have no book you have no prophet you have no God because how you know your God if you believe that the Quran is a garbage book and if you have the hadith is corrupt as you say and you do not trust the hadith so you don't believe in the hadith so what is left for you as a Muslim to believe or not to believe how a Muslim can establish his belief what will make you a Muslim if you have nothing left in your hand if we go in the Quran we will find the following <coughs> In chapter 4 verse number 87 it says that the best one who today who, who can tell a hadith is Allah the best one who can tell a hadith is Allah here the Muslim translation they say who the word can be truer than Allah but in Arabic it says so when Allah he talk and this is the Quran supposedly he is saying hadith and by the way Muhammad never have a book this is why you notice that the Muslims they call the Christians and the Jews people of the book but they don't call themselves people of the book which mean even the Quran confirm that Muslims are not to be considered people of the book for they never have a book Muhammad died and there was no book The Quran is a hadith. Allah words is a hadith. Muhammad words is hadith. Muhammad never collect the Quran. Allah he promised to collect the Quran, but he did not. And then the Muslims, hundreds of years after, supposedly, they start collecting the Quran based on recitation of recitation of recitation of recitation. And until now, the Muslims do not have a single manuscript. They found a manuscript two years ago. It's just one paper, one, one piece of leather actually. And it's dated to before Muhammad, which means the leather itself is dated to before Muhammad. And the ink itself is not really, is, the writing is not something really old. Because we know that when, when Muhammad was exist, the Arabic does not have those dots and volves we see right now in the text. Those are something been added later. Uh, <clears throat> the Quran confirm at the same time that Allah He lead people astray. And he whom Allah lets go astray, and I'm using the Muslim translation, but by the way, in Arabic it does, doesn't say the one who lead Allah astray, it says. ومن أضل الله ومن يضلل الله فلن تجد له سبيلا. The one who Allah deceive 
and the one who deceived by Allah you cannot find for him a guidance or a way here the Muslim they try to make it look nicer so they say and whom Allah lets go astray for him you can never find a way and here we ask ourselves Allah he brought us a hadith and then the Muslims they call it Quran why because there is a verse in the Quran says the word Quran so we name all the hadith of Allah Quran but yet there was no book then in that hadith we find that Allah saying that he is the one who mislead people and he is the one who deceive people and the one he deceived them you cannot find astray for them and then the Muslim he says to us that Allah is God but hold on how Allah is God but he is the one who lead people astray and he is the one who misguide them what is the position of Satan in the cult of Islam who is Satan then what Satan he does he do for a living if Allah is the one do that Satan does what so if you read and study carefully the hadith of Allah which is the Muslims call it Quran you find that this hadith lead us to one conclusion that Allah cannot be God he must be the devil he is the one who mislead and he is the one who misguide and he is the one who deceive and not only that his deception is extremely powerful to the point you cannot guide the one he deceive right uh, my friend anyone will say to me and block this person and block that person I will block you too we block people for a reason we have no time for kids here we speak as a scholars kids have no place any person he start lying life on air I, I have no time to talk to him so don't tell me like I notice you Tim you post for us saying this guy when I talk to you this guy don't do that again this place is for adult not for children this guy ultimate truth he is a stupid he don't even know what he's talking about he said in his bed and assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters at, at least sit down when you talk to people respect yourself look like you are high in drugs they do not know what he's talking about and all of them they lie did you notice the guy from Nigeria who called me yesterday who he claimed that he speak Arabic I gave him a chance first time second time third time he lie once after once after once never waste your time with a person have no dignity because you will never receive a conclusion so don't ever say to me I'm black a person otherwise I will block you too because I will consider you stupid like him if you want to invite somebody to talk to me invite someone have dignity he is smart and you know he speak about his religion as it is not somebody lie and deny with nothing like we spent two days talking about the Muslims saying to us from Nigeria that the Nasara are not Nasara. <laughs> the Quran says the Nasara are not Nasara. They say to us, no, the Nasara is coming from the word Nazareth. The Quran says that the Messiah, he said, who is my Nasara? The Muslims, they say, no, this is not from there. This is from, I mean, why do I want to waste my time? And when we show them, when we say, okay, can we go and read the interpretation? They refuse. So the second we go to that point, it's mean we have no point to talk about anything because the only thing we can prove or disapprove is what the Muslims have in their books. I wasn't in the time of Muhammad. He was not in the time of Muhammad. So if you don't accept the hadith, you don't accept the interpretation and you want to give me your own interpretations, then get lost. I don't give my own I'm, I'm not allowed. I did not create a book. It's called Tafsir uh, Ibn Kathir or At Tabari, or those are your scholars. So, in order, this is the problem we have today, that because they are ashamed of what is written in their books, they deny them. So they deny the Hadith, they deny the Quran, they deny the meaning of the Quran. They fabricate a new meaning of the Quran. So you will notice the Muslim today, if you say to him, "Okay, let us explain this verse. Let, let this verse in front of us." Which one you want? He say Ibn Kathir. We'll go to Ibn Kathir. We'll read it. He don't like it. He said, no, no, I uh, I don't want Ibn Kathir. Let's go to At-Tabari. 
We go to Atabari. He don't like Atabari. It's, it's a disaster. So we switch a different one. So they are a bunch of hypocrites. You see, the Muslims who used to be proud about religion, they are not exist no more. The only Muslims who they are exist today is ISIS, Al Qaeda, Boko Haram. You say to them, this is what it says. They say to you, yes, this is what it says. They are more decent from all the Muslims in the world. This is the truth. The only one who can tell you the truth is a Muslim terrorist. The rest are a bunch of garbage who have no idea what Islam is about. Or they try to make it look nicer. Which means they are hypocrite, they are liars. And when I say garbage, I'm seeing garbage about knowledge. You show him in the screen, you read for him, you give him the, the proof, you give him the reference, still he goes and he says, no, no, I don't accept this. So who are you? Don't waste your time with somebody when I give you his own opinion. Islam is not an opinion of a person. This is a belief system. Same as a Christianity. Christianity is not an opinion of a person. It's not up to me to tell you what Christianity is about. Christianity is already established before I exist, before my birth. So I am I came to life or not, that will not change what Christianity is. This is why our topic today actually is speaking about that we don't accept hadith. So what do you accept? What do you accept? All your religion based on the hadith, and Allah is Allah words himself is a hadith. Not only that, even in the Hadith books, which is supposed to be Muhammad, he spoke, there is something it's called Hadith Qudsi, which is equal to the Quran. Hadith Qudsi, it is a Hadith, but it's equal to the Quran. If we go right now and search for Hadith Qudsi, Anything is considered to be Hadith Qudsi is considered to be as holy as the Quran. Even those, the Muslims start running away from them. Let us see if we can find a list of Hadith Qudsi. But anyway, it's not really important now. But anyway, when a Muslim, he speak about his book, his religion, you will find that he would do everything in his hand to deny what we show because it is nothing but a stupid and shameful. And the only way to save Islam is to deny what we are having in our hand. The Muslims actually, they wish that hadith does not exist. Actually, the Muslims, they wish that 90% of the Quran does not exist. As an example, chapter 27 or chapter, chapter number 18 or even the chapter of Al-Baqarah. Or even the chapter of Al-Ahzab. I mean, if we take those, what is left of the Quran? Because they are full of fairy tale stories and stupid stories. So, what I'm expecting from Muslims in the coming generations, that the Muslims, they will start looking for a new Quran. <clears throat> they will. I will not be surprised if in 50 years from now, the Muslim, they decide to make a big conference and to filter the Quran and to throw all the verses which make Islam look stupid. And then they come with the new Quran out of all those verses which is in the Quran. As an example, today we were, you know, we have a topic previously, if you remember, uh, about the shayateen, they die for, uh, for Suleiman, they give him jewelries, uh, you know. Uh, he put them in chains. He have a black magic. Uh, you know, Suleiman have a flying carpet. He ordered the wind. This is all in the Quran. You know, the Muslim they cannot deny it. 
This is not hadith. So now, how in the world the Muslim he want to say to us, I believe. I believe in a book. And this book is from God. And then we see this book speaking about the most silly, stupid stuff. The ant speaking to the ants, flying carpet, uh, uh, the bird who is in charge of, uh, of water, and women who have no hair in their, in, in, in their legs, uh, the, the, the prophet who checked his birds and he found the bird is missing. And he said, If you did not give me an excuse, I'm going to take his feather one by one or slaughter him. I mean, this is Quran, this is not Hadith. In chapter 39, verse number 23, it says, Allah has revealed the best of hadith. You see here the translate the word is saying teaching. In fact, it does not say the word teaching, it says hadith. Allah hadith kitaban. It is Allah who sent down the best of the hadith. So the Quran is a hadith speech. In the same time. You will find that the Quran saying that the Quran have a lot of stupid things which is confusing to the point the Quran saying that this is a book is going to guide and misguide. Read carefully with me. And by the way, here I'm saying misguide as Muslim to translate, but the fact it doesn't say that again, it says decide deceive, you know. Read with me carefully. Allah has revealed the best of hadith as self-consistent book. This is the tra translation of the Muslims, which repeat in contents in man uh, manifold forms where eight shiver and this the skins. Oh man, this is like how nice. I mean, make your your skin shivers. Of those that hold their Lord in a way and then their skin and their hearts soften for Allah remembrance that is Allah guiding us wherewith he guide who is ever he flee pleases and whom Allah does not guide right path none to guide him I mean here you will see that the, the writer of the Quran is a person and the translation by the way let me change the translation this is a very funny translation i think this guy he uses software or something uh, mo duty do you duty i cannot find one translation you know i i should I, I should make a translation for the quran okay let's see this guy so look what uh, what he says here such is the guidance of Allah he guides therewith whom he please and such as Allah leaves to astray can have none to guide again the Muslim they keep using the word astray but the word here is yudlil if I copy the word yudlil in front of your eyes and I open A Muslim dictionary website. <coughs> a Muslim dictionary website. And I will put the word doodle in front of you in the screen. Copy paste. Be my witness. What doodle mean? Read it. Lead astray, misdirect, misguide, mislead, pervert, uh, be equal, cheat, deceive, lequel, cheat, deceive, delude, fool, mislead, and trick. Now, based on the sentence, the word always dallala, uh, like I can say dalla tariqahu. By this, when I say dalla tariqahu, which means it's something I did by mistake, 
uh, that's mean I miss um, let us say uh, uh, I, I took the wrong road I took the wrong but if you do it to somebody else that will make you a deceiver you know what I mean so it's if something happened to you done by yourself that's mean you let us say misdirect yourself as you see here the word is coming misdirect because you don't want to hurt yourself it's not your intention to hurt yourself but you did a mistake and you took let's say a wrong direction but when somebody does it for you it is always deceive if we go down here in the in the dictionary it says yudlil quran words lead let go astray has been led astray misguide by Allah, misguided by Allah, let go astray. Allah lets go astray. Had been led astray. He let goes astray. He let astray. Mislead. Deludes, misdirect, misguide, uh, mis misinformed, mislead, etc. Other words in the Quran where the word coming from like it says let us say from the same word yadul those are Quran word too yudillu 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 as you see yudillahu they will mislead they will mislead he let go go astray will misguide him he let give him uh, go astray mislead them he could lead you astray mislead them they could lead you astray uh, to serve from the right way so always it's coming as misguidedness or, or deception and the Quran confirmed to us in every almost every place in the Quran that Allah is the one who misguide people he is the one who always misguide and not only that the Quran confirm that if Allah when Allah misguide he is the one who guide and he is the one who misguide which mean you don't guide yourself to, to God which mean it's not you who convert to Islam if you ever convert to Islam it's Allah who converted you to Islam and if you are not a Muslim it's not you who choose not to be a Muslim it is Allah who made you not to be Muslim and for sure this is confirmed with the hadith too you remember when we speak about the children that Allah he created for heaven a child even before he's born even he, if he dies an infant he might still might go to hell even though he's an infant if we go in the hadith we will find the following as an example <coughs> you remember this hadith we mentioned before which is Sahih, the Muslim cannot deny it and say, oh, this is weak, they, they played the game of uh, fake and true and etc. Uh, when Aisha, she thought that a child who is born from a Muslim family who is an infant, he passed away, so she thought he is going to be a bird from the birds of paradise, then, uh, and she said he will be a bird from paradise, uh, Muhammad, he said to her, oh, don't say that, it might be the otherwise, because Allah, he created the hell and he created the doer of the uh, uh, for the paradise uh, 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 so before Allah he created them they are already decided where they will go it's not about sin you you make Allah will misguide you even if you are a baby Allah misguide you to go to hell even when you are in the stage of embryo according to Islam and by the way according to Islam the baby is created from the backbone in case you do not know the muslim always they translate they say loins i'm not sure what loins mean really let me check the dictionary to see what loins come exactly as a part of the body both side of the spine between the lowest flesh ribs and the hip bone it looked like accurate not bad okay but you know I, what i know i think the backbone is the most the 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 lower back of the bone is the most accurate translation would be so anyway you will see here in the hadith Muhammad he confirmed that every child 
he is already his destiny written before he is born even before he is created when he was according to Allah because the Quran says that the sperm of the man came in from the backbone and you will see Muslims later they will try to delete this verse from the Quran and already what they can do right now they start saying it doesn't say backbone it doesn't say they try to change the meaning in order to defend the owner of the uh, author of the Quran which is Muhammad so here Muhammad he confirmed that the baby child who is an infant who pass away not necessarily will go to heaven while Aisha she thought he will go to heaven because he is a child who never reached the age to commit sin and he never commits sin as you see in the story but Muhammad he did not agree with that he says Aisha per adventure it may be the otherwise Aisha she said he will go to heaven Muhammad say it may be the otherwise which means he might go to hell but hold on this is a child who did not commit sin why he will go to hell and he is a child of a Muslim family so where is the logic in that the logic has the following Allah created for paradise those who are fit for it while they were in their father backbone so it doesn't matter whether you commit sin or not even the child who is a born yesterday if he died tomorrow still he might go to hell because Allah misguide him even when he's a baby do you see guys what I'm talking about and actually this statement alone is enough to prove to us that Islam is the most stupid religion ever because if it's written for me when I am a baby what I will be if it's written to me before actually I'm created so what the point of reward or punishment I will be rewarded if I'm lucky I will be punished or if I'm unlucky because this is based on luck you see this child here the the, 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 the child we are talking about in this funeral we do not know if he will go to hell or heaven based on Muhammad because based on his luck he might be lucky and go to heaven and he might be unlucky and go to hell so committing sin not committing sin is not the point and that means everything in Islam is stupid and this is a total contradiction but Muhammad always he come with a story which is very stupid if you remember when Muhammad he said If you don't commit sin Allah will bring people he will replace you and this is a Sahih Hadith too by him who is my hand the, whose hand is my life uh, Muhammad is swearing by Allah supposedly if you were not commit sin to commit sin okay if we did not commit sin what would happen Allah would sweep you out of existence so look what happened here against all the teachings of those who they we call them or even Muslims they call them prophet Muhammad he teach that committing sin is a necessity otherwise God will destroy you have you ever heard of such a cult like this before Have you ever heard of a madness like this? If you don't commit sin, God will destroy you. Not if you commit sin. So what Islam is about? How this guy can be a prophet of God? All the prophets of God, they have one message, one warning, don't commit sin, otherwise you will be punished. But here we notice that if you are a child and you are born and you did not commit sin, you might go to hell. If you are born and now you are adult and you don't commit sin, God might destroy you. You have to commit sin. And then Allah, he like one thing about a human being. 
if you don't commit sin he would kill you destroy you and he would replace you by those who would commit sin this is the favorite kind of a human being for Allah the one who commits sin why because those that are they are the one who made him happy because after you commit sin then you have to seek forgiveness from Allah and here we understand we can analyze the nature of this funny God according to Muhammad his God is a is a lonely God so this is Allah Let us do some drawing, drawing here. The lonely Allah, with this, this is Allah. Is lonely. And we will make it a caveat. And Allah is bored. Allah wanted to have fun. So He created us. And the purpose of creating us is to commit sin. We are made, made. Medicine. And if we do not commit sin, Allah will be angry from us and He will destroy us. So, what we understand if you don't do sin, you die. You will be punished but if you commit sin Allah like you so the lonely Allah he need an entertainment program it's going to be boring that people don't commit sin because then they will not need his forgiveness This is the whole point. Allah wanted to have fun. He wanted to create a show program. So we as a human, we have a duty to do, a performer to do. He created us, he sent us there, and he made us commit sin. And if you are not to commit sin, Allah will destroy you because this is not the purpose of your creation. And He will replace you with people who commit sin because that will bring nice and entertainment to Allah so He can enjoy His life better. What do you think, Muslims? What kind of God you have? And your God his justice is amazing to the point even a child who is not born yet Allah he decide for him that he might go to hell don't you notice that this is extreme stupid and it is extreme injustice 
why a child who did not commit sin he will go to hell for sure not to forget to mention that your God do not even know where the baby and how the baby is created so he think that we are coming from the backbone and from the spine by the way if science discover that the baby is coming from the spine you will find Muslims making a million video about Muhammad saying so Muhammad was just copying the Arab the Arab before Muhammad they believed that uh, the baby or let's say the sperm of the man is coming from his backbone why when somebody he exaggerate with having sex he will have a pain in the lower back so he feel like he is uh, exhausted in that area so they thought that this is because this is where the sperm is coming from so Muhammad he copied that and he 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 believed in it and he made it as part of his religion as usual everything in the Quran is a copy paste of somebody else The same as the honey, the same as the the camel urine, the same as the seven sleepers, the same as Suleiman and the ant, which is the legion of the Jews, the same as the punishment of the grave. I mean, everything Muhammad he have is nothing of his. This is something he copied, he stole from somebody else. He like it, he adopt it, he put it in his book, and he make it coming from his God, which he called him Allah. So how we can accept such a silly stupid God to send us such a silly ignorant prophet actually this is very normal silly God silly prophet they match there is no God but uh, but Allah and there is no Allah but Muhammad this is the same person Muhammad this is why they are perfect match in stupidity you see, I can accept that Muhammad is a man who make mistakes, but remember, Muhammad, when he say anything like this, he claim that he have knowledge from Allah. If you remember, <clears throat> when a bunch of people, they came to Muhammad and they asked him, there's a three questions nobody, uh, uh, nobody knows but a prophet of God. Muhammad, he said, after the guy, he asked him the question, he said, Jibreel, just now inform me. Jibreel, just now inform me. Let us see if we can find the hadith. So any question, even in normal conversation, Muhammad, he got the answer from Allah. This is not him talking. Read carefully. <clears throat> a man, he came to him and he asked him and he said to him, I will ask you three questions nobody knows except a prophet of God. I mean, look here at the drama. Right away, you will notice that this story is a stupid at the point. It is beyond stupidity. Why? The guy saying to him, I will ask you three questions. Nobody know the answer unless he is a prophet, but he knows the answer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Guys, are we listening? How in the world you say no one knows the answer for them and you know the answer? No one knows the answer except the prophet of God. Not only nobody knows the answer, only prophet of God know the answer, but yet the guy who asked the question he knew the answers because he agreed that this is the correct answer. That's mean he's a prophet of God too, and that's mean Muhammad's story is a fabrication because Muhammad he claimed that he is the last prophet and he is the only prophet in his time. The same story confirmed that there's two prophets. One is the one is asking the question, and the one is answering the question. For those questions, nobody knows their answer, save a prophet of God. 
but yet this guy he knew the answer which means he's a prophet and then after Muhammad been asked the question Muhammad right away supposedly and by the way the story here it's not really accurate uh, supposedly it took Muhammad some time before he answered maybe a week or two however and the story in front of us doesn't say there's time it report the story as if it's happened all together so if we assume it happened all together no problem after he asked him the question Muhammad he said just now just now Jibreel has informed me about that so the answer is coming from who it's from Allah and there's no way the answer can be strong or it's just stupid if you read the answer you will see how stupid the answer is and this is why the Muslims now they try to wash their hands from those stories because those stories prove clearly that their prophet is big fat scam the man asked him what make the child gender change to be male or female which mean he resembled the parents Muhammad he says Jibreel just told me and this is the answer and if the man's discharge proceed that of the women then the child resemble the father so if you have orgasm first the baby will be a male boy like you and if the women discharge proceed that of the man the child resemble the mother now for sure that is nothing but a big fat lie but now Muhammad he confirmed that this story and this answer was given to him by Jibreel and Jibreel is the authorized delivery boy of Allah is the angel of Allah how such a stupid answer can come to existence how somebody claimed to be prophet of God he say such a statement unless he is a false man so now if I'm a Muslim and I don't want to be honest that Muhammad obviously here is being stupid and he's claiming that God told him the only solution to get away from this to say I don't accept this story I don't accept it this is the solution Thank you, my friend Francis from Ghana. We love you too. We love our friends and brothers in Africa. Uh, we, 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 we follow the news of the terrorist attack in your cities. My friend, stay strong. And all of Islam is based on intimidation. They try to intimidate you so you bow down for, for the God of, of the infidels, the God of the pagan, the God of the pagan Muhammad, the God of the black stone. Don't let them have fear in your heart, my friend. Stay strong. They try, they try hard by their terrorism, but they will never win. Now, if we are listening, I'm going to open my Skype only for Muslims. Please remember, only for Muslims. So if there is a Muslim on a call, he can call us. Only Muslims. And you will hear yourself how the Muslims go in denial when they see those stupid stories. And right away they say, oh, we don't accept the Hadith. And not only that, even they will say, we don't accept the Quran. So what do you accept? What Islam is about? What is left of Islam? Nothing. Nothing left of Islam. Zero.
Let us see if we have any Muslims here. Let's see this person here. Hmm. A Muslim saying to me, stop spreading lies. I like this guy. Let us see this guy. Hello. How are you, Abdul? Hello. Yes, Abdul. How are you? Hey. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. All right. You are saying to me in text, stop spreading lies. Why? Yes, because you are uh, spreading lies. What? What do you mean? Aren't you the one who called me in the morning and you said to me you believe in the flying carpet? Yes. Mm -hmm. So is the flying carpet is a lie or true? It's true. So it's true lie or true true what? True story. So now if I say to you I have a flying carpet, I will not be a liar. Yes, you will be. I will be a liar. So if your prophet speak about flying carpet, you believe it. But if I speak about it, you don't believe it. Yes, because uh, you are a liar. Hmm. So when you what make you believe that there's a flying carpet according to your prophet and make him not a liar to you how he can prove that he have a flying carpet because uh, the Quran cannot be man-made impossible this is okay what about the flying carpet was it man-made or made in Germany or in China where, where the flying carpet is made if I show you proof that the Quran is not made cannot be made by a man then it's true this is another question I'm asking you the flying carpet which we spoke about which Allah he gave to Suleiman it's made where it's not made it's not made so what do you mean it's uh, given by the angels okay but who made the flying carpet <laughs> what do you mean uh, Allah well oh, okay so Allah he made the flying carpet yes what is it you Muslim you say if Allah wants something to happen he say B is going to be yes okay why he need to make a, a flying carpet he can say to Suleiman <coughs> fly and he will fly in his kingdom because uh, he needed that uh, for his uh, troops also hmm. so he put all his army and whole camels and donkeys in the flying carpet and they fly the whole kingdom right yes is it, is it is it possible to have like uh, two million men and women and camels and donkeys flying on top of flying car but don't you think this is too much exaggeration uh it's it's uh it's not a million so it's not <coughs> no no and then at the seal it says six hundred thousand shares <coughs> yeah uh, it's not a million that's uh, okay six hundred thousand shares isn't it too much you think yes Okay, so how a flying carpet is going in 600,000 shares? <laughs> because uh, it's just a tough seal. Uh, the carpet is big, but it's not that big. So you are saying that the seal is lying? Yes. <laughs> now they have drawn. They have a drone now? Yes. What the drone have to do with the flying carpet of your profit? What? Why you are talking about the drone? We are talking about the flying carpet now. Yes. Okay. I know. So you said yourself. He said he put his uh, army in the flying carpet, right? Yes. How many soldiers, Suleiman? He have a lot. Like how many? I don't know. Give me a number. Uh, I d I don't know. Like a few what? thousand. Few thousand. How many you think? Ten thousand, twenty million, what? I don't know. Maybe like five thousand. 
So 5,000, we can assume 5,000, they were flying in the flying carpet. 5,000 yes. soldiers with 5,000 horses? Uh, yes. Okay. So if every horse he need, every two horses need two meter by two meter, and we have 5,000 horses, let us calculate. Oh my God. Two meter by two, two by two. This is four. X five. This is twenty thousand meters flying carpet just for the horses. What do you think? Uh, yeah. So what's wrong? Uh, uh, nothing wrong. I mean, this is very, very convincing. The same as in front of us, the hadith he says that if the women have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. Uh, sorry, if the women have orgasm first, the baby will be a girl. If the man have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. This is true, too, right? Yes. This is true. Yes. Did you try it yourself yes. at home with your wife? What's that? Sorry. Did you try that with your with your wife? I don't, I'm young. I don't have a wife. You don't have a wife. Hmm. Sorry. Okay, did you ask your dad? You know, you, you you told me before you look like your your dad or your mom. What? You you my, uh, my mother, my mother. You look like your mother. So this is mean according to the prophet, your mother she have orgasm first. Yes. But this is impossible because the hadith here says that the baby will look like the mother, which means he will be a female. So are you a female? No, 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 no. Resembling means look like. Oh no, 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 my friend. It's, it's, the, the definition word of re resemble means look like if mm -hmm. I say I resemble uh, a person that means I look like a person mm. okay <laughs> what if I show you that this is not what the prophet saying your prophet he said it clearly that you will be uh, uh, you know uh, the child will be male okay and what, what, what if I show you that Allah will decide it to be a male female Allah is the one who decide. Yes. Okay, that's when your prophet is lying, because here no. your prophet, you're no. the one who said that. No. You see, you just get, you, you just got your that's prophet busted. Hold on, hold on. That's one hadith. That's one hadith. What one hadith? That is one hadith. It was two hundred years with, uh, uh, written after the death of Muhammad. It, it cannot be perfect, you know. See here we but go. The, see guys, here we go. A second ago, this hadith was good. It was perfect. It's fine. Now he got himself busted. He said to me, "I can show you that Allah is the one who decide the gender." Right. Yes. So now yes. he in order to get away from this problem, he says, Oh, this hadith is not perfect. So no, yeah, it's not perfect. Why is it perfect? How do you know? Because all all in the other hadiths were saying that it will look like the uh, mother. Mm. It will look like the mother. But according to science, yes. if you if you let us say it's not about uh, it's not about or uh, it's not about male or female, but this is not what it says. But I will go with you for now. Let us say you look like your mother if your mother have orgasm first. Is that something proven by science or this is stupid? It's uh, it's logical. It's logical. If, 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 hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. If I have uh, if my uh, semen uh, proceeds of the woman, then it's logical that the, my child will look like me. Mm. God forbid. You know, I hope not that will not happen. But uh, so if your semen proceed your wife, but your wife have a semen? No. So you just said your wife proceed your your semen pro proceed your uh, wife. No, if mine uh, discharge proceeds of the woman. Okay, the discharge of the woman is what? What she discharge milk? I don't know. Orange, I don't know how. Uh, I don't know how woman. I don't know how woman called it. I mean, I don't know much about woman. Well, we can go and ask your prophet because your prophet is expert. You know, as you know. Isn't it? Yeah. My friend, my prophet doesn't say that woman is sperm. Well, okay, where in the Quran does it say? That semen comes from uh, from the backbone and ribs. Does it say and or between? So it's one place from one gender. We will go to the Quran. Read with me here carefully. The oh, Messenger oh. of Allah said that the man water is thick and white, and the woman water is thin and yellow. Whichever of them come first, the child will resemble the parents. Do you see it? Yes. Okay. So the water of the man, obviously, this is the sperm, correct? What is it's that? what the uh, uh, discharge, yes. Yeah. Is this so uh, when he says he called the the man sperm water, he called the woman uh, 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 leak. What he called it water too. 
So obviously he thinks that both of them, they have a sperm. No, because they didn't have the... Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, what is that yellow thing? Which, 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 what is that yellow thing, which is the charge of the women, come out in her private part, will make I the baby know. look... Hey. No, you don't know. Did you ask a doctor I, before? Did you try to ask somebody? I don't know. I don't know the day, the name of the uh, whether of the woman. I I only know the name of the man, of course, the sperm, but I don't know of the woman. Mm. All right. Uh, where where in the Quran does it say a uh, man, a semen comes from between? Uh, from I, 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 the, I don't know. The, somebody told me that. What do you think? You do not know. No, it doesn't say that it comes from the uh, breast of the woman. Say it that? says, okay, listen, the Quran says that it, it emerges between the backbone and ribs. Hmm. It, it doesn't say that it emerges from the backbone and ri uh, for, from the backbone and ribs. Okay, it but says we know, between. hold on, hold on, okay. But do so, you see, so hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, you see the word between, the word between is explained, yes. uh, explained in the height in front of us. Do you see the hadith? Let me see. This hadith in front of us explain what between mean. It's between the liquid of the man and the liquid of the woman. So liquid of the man is coming from his backbone, and the liquid of the woman is coming from her ribs. Let, let, let me see. <clears throat> oh, it's not saying that. It doesn't say that. My friend, the, the Quran does say that it emerges between. So it's one okay, place. I will show you. One... I will show you. Okay, I will show you. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Read. This is the hadith. What do you say about this one? Um Salim, she came to Muhammad and she said to him, Allah, what about a woman she sees uh, in her dream, something like which men they see? This woman, she was masturbating. Muslim women, they always do that. And it's, it's halal, you know, using zucchini or cucumber. It's, if she sees, that has uh, uh, Muhammad. He said, "If she sees that uh, and and has this charge, then let her perform a bath." Um Salama, the wife of your prophet, she said, "O oh, messenger of Allah, does that really happen?" That's uh, mean, I I already read that. Yeah, that's mean the prophet wife. She never have this charge. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, because this is not, the is not using the right uh, private part. He is using something else. So he, he said, yes, the water of the man is thick and white, and the water yes. of the women is thin and yellow. Whichever yes. of them comes first is going to make the child, you know, resemble the parents. So yes, your prophet confirming here that... No, the, no, no. Listen, do women have a water, yes or no? Yes, right? When they discharge. Uh, well, yes. Maybe, maybe the pee, the piss. No. What is that? Yeah, look, both women and men have discharged when they. Yeah, uh, but your prophet saying, your prophet saying the women water is yellow, right? Yeah. So he, he what, what is that yellow? What what is that yellow? I mean, I don't know how you call it. I don't know much about women. Hmm. Maybe she have an infection. Maybe. Maybe the wives Listen. of Muhammad and the fam and Muhammad he never met a wife. Maybe he made them have infection because why their water is yellow? What is that? That's the sperm. Maybe it's piss. No. So you you just said that the women no, have a sperm. No, of the man, of the man. No, you just said I said what? Why is what? Why it's yellow? You said this is the sperm. I I thought you said men. No, I'm talking why it's yellow. Yellow. The women is yellow. Okay, but now let's go to the Quran. Okay, hold on. Uh, uh, no, before uh, we go in the Quran, before we go into the Quran, here we go. Before we go to the Quran, because we are trying to make a connection here. Uh, <clears throat> if you read here, you will see. Let us see a hadith. All those hadith are saying the same, but we are, we want to show you something uh, more, uh, more clear. 
No, but the Quran describes the semen reproduction in one place of one gender. Well, the, 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 the semen is coming what? It says the semen comes from between the backbone and ribs. It doesn't say and the backbone and ribs. Okay, the, the backbone of who? The uh, the backbone uh, between the backbone and ribs of a man. Okay, hold on. I, I, will, I will go with you. So you are saying because it's, it's, it's not the Quran because, does not say anything about the women, correct? You are saying no, that. because it says between, it says one place okay. of one gender. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to show you something in the screen. And I want you to explain to me. So if we go. This is the human body, as we see in the screen. Do you see the screen? Not now. Okay, actually, let us see if we can find something. Yes, I see it. Showing the back. Okay. Yes. This one showing the back, which is better. So this is the human body. Okay. Yes. So according to your prophet, according to you, the the semen is coming from the backbone here. Let us make it in a blue. Or black from this area and then yes from the ribs, the ribs and then from the ribs here the neck, the, the, between the, ribs. the rib is here in the location of the neck. no no listen listen you have a misunderstanding it doesn't say it comes from between the backbone it says it comes between the backbone and ribs between right there hmm. Where, but the big the backbone is here in the back yes but it says between so it's not actually at the backbone Okay, uh, I'm going with you from between, but here the here, the backbone starts here. Yes. Okay, and now then the, we have the location of the necklace. What what make the sperm coming from between this and this? What does that mean? It said it doesn't say that it comes from the back and ribs. It says between. Okay, I'm 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 going with you. I'm going with your lie, you know, because the no, Quran, lie, no, because the Quran say clearly that because the word tarai, my friend. It is a name for the bones of the women. The women, the women. It's not. Uh, my friend, it says uh, between. It's describing. I know, I know, but the word taraib, the word taraib, is a word in Arabic for the ribs of the women, and specifically for the location of the necklace. Do you, no. Do you want to show you that? Do you speak Arabic? No. Do you know somebody speak Arabic? Yeah, but. It says between the backbone and ribs. It My says friend, one why you keep repeating yourself like like a like like a recording machine? I'm saying to you, if I show you that the word taraib mean specifically the uh, location of the necklace of the women, specifically, not what? anywhere in the bones. Only only where you see where I I point the, the the arrow there. It is between like down the neck. This is where the location of the necklace. This is taraib. Which means it's the last yeah. bones is the last bones of the ribs in that and from the top. So when the Quran says from the backbone and the tribe, no, the, it says between. Between, yeah, between. Because this why yeah, it's, if it's between, then it's, if it's if it okay, says okay, between. Let me, let me ask you, who is the scholar who you you consider him your best example to follow? Myself. Yourself, that's amazing. I heard of you before. What's your name? <laughs> what? I, I believe you. You must be a scholar. You know, I'm actually I'm learning from you. So, what's your name, my friend? You must be. I'm... Are you Ibn Kathir? Yes. You are Ibn Kathir. Okay, let's go and see what Ibn Kathir said. As long as you are Ibn Kathir. No, 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 no. no, no, no don't no. tell me. No, no. You are the one who said you are Ibn Kathir. Everybody heard you. So now we no. go. No, you see, you are in trouble now. You said you are Ibn Kathir, and I believe you. I am naive and I believe you and you are sexy and I know it You're like Zach and I so now we will go to Ibn Kathir this is a chapter no, 18, I, don't, my don't friend you cannot you are the my one friend. who said yes that's mean you accept look, Ibn Kathir don't tell me, the, don't friend me now I'm going to get you busted I'm I, I, I you know my friend, no uh, no, 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 no this is Ibn Kathir this is no, Ibn Kathir hold on don't 
don't make Show me hang up on you. Be honest for a second. You Muslims are a bunch of scam. Go here we go. Read with no, me. you are a scam. Read you with me. Like, read with me. Read with me. Read with me. Read with me. It's just, it's just between. It says between. Okay, read with it's me. Just okay, re read something. with me. Read with me. What it says? It, it doesn't say and backbone and. My friend, lips. read with me. Read with me, Mr. Mikathir. This is your book. No. Read it. Listen. Listen, it says here uh, that uh, in the Quran it says between, so it's it's describing one place. My friend, is it? Aren't you Ibn Kathir? You told me you are Ibn Kathir. You were lying to me. No, oh, yes. Okay. You, oh no, yes. What does that mean? Read carefully, my friend. It says, "He created I, from the water yeah. gushing forth, meaning the sexual fluid that comes uh, uh, bursting forth from the man and the woman." Thus, the child produced from both of them by permission of Allah, due to his says, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs, meaning the backbone or the loins of the man and the ribs of the woman, which is referring to her chest. Uh, as uh, Shabib said, Bin Bishar reported, Ikrama, etc. He said from Ibn Abbas, he said, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs, the backbone and the, uh, and the, uh, of the man and the ribs of the women. It is the fluid is yellow and fine in texture. The child will not be born except from both of them, i.e. sexual fluid. Concerning Allah statement, Verily, he is able to bring him back to life. So now we, we got the answer in. So why? What, now, what do you say? Listen, listen. Does the Quran say that? Yeah, the Quran says that. What do you mean, because my the, friend? That's a big because, difference. Because the Quran, between, you see, Abdul. And, and, the Quran used the word taraib. It says it, it says between. So no, taraib. It's, 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 taraib is not ribs. Taraib is the location of the necklace on. The women chest. No, you're lying. Okay. See, you're lying again. Oh, okay. Thank you very much for your call. Next, who is next? You see, we are lying. I'm showing you your books. Oh, I'm lying. <laughs> In order to be lying, you be Kathir, I have to be lying to. What do you think, guys? This is the Quran. So now what the, what the Muslims do? They will say now the Quran is corrupt. The only way to avoid the stupidity of who they called him God, they have millions of videos about science in the Quran. I mean, read my books, the one I read, I made about this stupid book. You will, you will die laughing. They corrupt the meaning of the Quran. With no shame, just in order to deceive you and to make you believe that the Quran is not a stupid book. Not only they try by corrupting the meaning, they hide the stupidity of the Quran, but in the top of that, they try to make it fit with science, which means the corruption have two directions: corruption in the translation, corruption in the interpretation, and corruption in the Quran itself words meaning. And now, another Muslim will call me, and I will say, I don't accept this interpretation. Show me the different one. We show him the different one. Oh, it is horrible too. So which was? So now there is a. Like actually, one of you he sent me a text message in Skype. Say to me, there's a guy. He said he accepts the interpretation of Ibn Al Nabulsi, but Al Nabulsi is not a scholar in Islam. This guy is an Arabic teacher. <laughs> he have a degree in Arabic. <laughs> He's an idiot. But you know, this is the time where you can make a lot of money by defending Islam and try to say to show something amazing in this book, which is not there. Because those people, Muslims, they are waiting for somebody to save this cult. Islam is a drowning. 
So when somebody he came and he started trying to show them that there's scientific miracles, etc., and because already you believe in it anyway, so you would accept whatever he say. But not us. I mean, it's stupid. Don't you see it? Can't you see it? How in the world this is the book of God? Why are you are calling me, Abdul? Hello. Why are you are calling me again? Yes, uh, I want to talk about the uh, embryology in the Quran. But this is here we go. The Quran has just told us the secrets, all everything here. Uh, in chapter twenty-three, verse fourteen. Mm -hmm. Okay, chapter twenty-three, verse number forty. Are you sure you want to go there? Yes. Okay, guys, be my witness. Um, he is the one who yes. chose the verse. Okay, don't, but don't yes. say I don't want to talk about it no more. So you promise me? I promise. Okay, chapter twenty-three, verse number forty, right? Yes, and and we and we are going to uh, go to the Arabic dictionary for the meaning of Allah. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> twenty-three, right? Yes. Oh, make a theory. You don't have it, you know, the, in the, the Arabic translation. No, 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 not, uh, not, uh, no, 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 uh, make a theory, not a make a theory. Why are you scared? What, what happened? What happened? No, let's uh, go to Quran. Okay. You said you want me to go to the Arabic dictionary to see what the word not for me, correct? No, uh, alaqa. Alaqa. Okay. Let's see. Yes. We go to our actual dictionary. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link. Okay. No, no. You send me a link. This is an article. We don't accept articles. We accept dictionary. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show it to you. Okay, no problem. I will go here. Not, none of the uh, uh, interpretations say it's a clot of blood. All of them say it's a halakha. People translated it into a blood okay. in the 20th century. But uh, Ibn Katia and all the other others never said it's a clot, actual blood. Okay, all right. I want you to look with me. Okay. And you tell me what's happening. Let me see my YouTube. Hmm. <clears throat> Do you see it? Yes. Okay. So which one is the yeah. one you want? Yeah, you keep saying it's a clot of blood. Does it say here? Okay, here we go. Blood the clot. It can mean that, yes. Hmm. So it can but, mean that. Which one? Will, so yeah. which which one you you want me to accept now? Which one you Is want? It, okay. Which okay. one? You, which Let one me, you like? Which one? No, no. I will hey, go with you, my, my friend. I'm I will go answer. with you. I will make you happy. I'm gonna huh? I'm gonna answer. Imagine before the, the discovery of embryology hmm. that I would say that the uh, embryo is actually a becoming a leech. So, so you are saying this is a leech, correct? Yes. Okay, but but this but is it, okay. No problem. I will go with you guys. Did he say a leech? Did he say a leech? Yes. Be my witness. Okay, that's mean proof that your God is a stupid. Why? Let us go and see. You are the one who said, the, guys. Did he choose leech? Not me. He is the one who chose leech. Okay. I mean, I, I'm going. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hold on. I'm, you know, I'm going to go with you, my friend. Here we go. Okay. So now we have a leech. What is the leech? I'm going to replace the word congealed blood because you don't like it with leech. Is okay. that fine? Like, because that will make yeah. you happy, correct? No, it's it's the truth. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going. I'm going to put the word leech here instead of the word congealed blood. Are we good with that? Yes. Okay. So we put the word leech here. But what is the one became a leech? It is the sperm and the egg and the egg. Uh, okay. Leech. According to which donkey in science he says to you that the sperm will transform to be a leech? Oh, the, the there's a this, the uh, the sperm will go inside of the egg and it will be gone. But the Quran doesn't have to be that detailed. But no, it's giving details. It coming. It giving details. It says we made the sperm into leech. Yes. Okay, and then the leech became 
a fetos. According yes. to your Muslim translation, you do you want want you want loom or fetos? Doesn't say fetos here. It says loom. Okay. So <laughs> according to science, the sperm would become a leech, and then the leech would become a loom. A uh, leech will become a loom. Yes. <laughs> and then the loom will become a become bones. <laughs> yes. And then the bones we close them with with the with the flesh. Yes. My friend, your God is a certified donkey. He got a degree uh, uh, like Zachary Naik now. Who in the world wanna believe in such a garbage? Oh, but I keep here. I keep uh, hear, hear you saying that it's a cloud of blood uh, deceiving I the Muslims. Did, guys, did I say a blood? No, it's not me who's saying that. It's in front of you. You see? You say no, I'm deceiving the Muslims? That... No, I'm not deceiving anyone. Here we go. Even your scholars, they are translating it as a congealed blood. Do you see it? Yes, you, the uh, Arabic uh, people who speak Arabic, like uh, 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 they all translate into a blood. Okay, what about, they... what about the interpretation? Why the interpretation agree with me? If I am lying. No, no, because uh, the, uh, all the in interpretations, they are not translated uh, into English. Uh, people in the 20th century, they translated that, not uh, the uh, Ibn Kathir. Okay, no all problem, the I can show it in Arabic. Yes, it is alaqa. No. Yes. It says their blood. Alaqa no, it doesn't blood. say blood. My friend, no, my friend. Uh, uh, alaqa can mean Anyway, blood, anyway, it, uh, even, even after we change the word congeal the blood, to the one you like to be leech, still the Quran is stupid. No. What do you mean? No. There's nobody believe that the sperm will transform into a, 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 a to 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 a leech, and then oh, it's oh, going oh. to be a okay. baby. According to you, according to you, the sperm will be a baby at the end of the day. Correct? Okay. Okay. Wait. Let me uh, uh do this. According don't tell to me. You, don't tell me. Okay. According to this verse, the sperm is going to transform <laughs> into a baby. Correct? Yes. Okay. No. And how that happened? No, it's 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 in the, the development. It's in the stages. Well, okay, but no listen. problem. It took stages. But what is the first stage? It's a sperm. The sperm will transform into a leech. You are the one who told me that. You forgot. Yes. Okay. So sperm became leech. The leech became a loom. The loom became bones. The bones we closed them with flesh, and that's it. Bingo. We have you. No. The, then uh, we developed it into another creature. That's it. You became a creature. That's it. You are done. No, no, no. It, then it says, then we developed it, meaning it's still in progress. No, that's it. He closed no, you. Because, no, because in Hadith it says that after it becomes a uh, loom, hmm. then Allah will uh, uh, Allah will decide it to be a male or female, then he will uh, breathe okay, his spirit. Okay, guys. So after you are a loom and he closed you with the bones, Allah decide that you are male or female. No, that's... no, no, no. After you become a loom, and then uh, uh, your, your uh, soul will be breathed will be a uh, breeding uh, into you so with them you become a male or a female and uh in the quran it says that the uh, last stage is that allah will develop uh, humans into another creature meaning you will cause the uh, body parts to grow okay. you know so like according to you according to what uh, about the way your prophet he said that after he finished your creation allah he decide if he is male or female correct no, it's during the stages. Yes. Okay, let us see. No, no, let us see. Here we go. Yes, it is. Yes. Let us see what your prophet said. I hope you will friend. not say. I hope you will not say he's liar. And you know? come on, we show respect. Show respect. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't... Even okay. even if it's said a lot of blood, it's still correct All because right. in the second week, the uh, blood vessels begin to uh, begin to form in in the, inside the uh, no no baby. problem. So it's, okay. No, yes. Can you read it with me? Can you read with me this hadith? Oh my god, this guy. Don't say my god, say oh my Allah, please. Respect yourself. Don't insult. Read it, please. My travel scene and remains in the room for 40 no, no, days. Read, read. What is of of that? I want people to hear you. Come on, read. When the drop of semen remains in the womb for 40 days, the angel comes and says, okay, hold on. The it, drop of semen will stay in the womb for 40 or 50 days. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, in the in the also hadith it says that. Uh, 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 come on, it's clear. Your prophet said, the sperm of the man will go to where to the womb, and he will stay in the womb for forty or fifty days. 
I never heard of a sperm going to the womb. What the sperm is going to do in the womb? Uh, having dinner there? Secondly, is going to stay there for 40 or 50 days? What the sperm is doing there? For vacation? Yes, but in the other hadith, it says that uh, after it becomes a sperm of 40 days, mm -hmm. that Allah will give the... Uh, the loop a shape no problem no problem but 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 you so you agree you agree that your prophet he said the sperm will stay in the womb for 40 days correct can you let me finish talking i'm letting you, you i'm asking you is is that do you agree with that that the the, the yes, sperm i agree i i agree but let me finish talking okay no, no i will let you I finish so you agree that the sperm will stay in the womb for 40 days but this is stupid my friend uh, what do you say well there's a other part of this which sounds accurate because it says the semen room remain in the womb for 40 days for 40 days but when you look at the semen then he says allah will give it a shape but when you look at the uh see uh, at the uh, embryo at 40 days it's like already having a shape uh, it's one part is miraculous but one part according to you is an error right my friend, I'm not saying any, I'm not a doctor. I'm learning from you. You are Ibn Kathir. So here, your prophet saying that a drop of a drop of a sperm, not semen. You see here, they put the word semen between two brackets. It doesn't say that. So you are made from a drop, which is a drop of a sperm, which is long, wrong too. And then that drop will stay inside the womb for forty days. I want you to go right now and search on Google and tell me how long the sperm can live inside the woman. Uh, I don't care if it stays for uh, 72 hours. Mm. So why your why your God is wrong here? My God? Mm. It's my prophet. Well, your God, Muhammad, you know, come on. Because okay. here, your prophet, he got this information from who? From from his God, correct? Yeah, from uh, Jibreel. Okay, so you can, so we have to say this is your God talking. It's not Muhammad. He just delivered what he learned from uh, your, your prophet is not a doctor, correct? So he get this yeah. information from who? From Allah. That's it. Yeah, but so this is yep. this is this is godly information. This is why it's very true. So now we have your God, who is amazing God, full of science, saying that the sperm of the man go inside the woman to the womb. Look like this is the bedroom, and he stay there for fifty days. What the sperm is doing there for fifty days? It's forty. It says no forty or fifty. Read it. Yeah, but and all the other hadith says forty. No, I think you see what let me tell you what happened. I think your prophet here is not sure because the men are different. Some men they have uh, they like to stay longer, some men their sperm is like to stay less. You know, I mean, the moody, yes, moody yeah, uh, yeah. So, oh, oh. your prophet here is making it clear that it's either 50 or 40. However, why I'll send you a link? No, I, I send you don't, a link. don't me send me a link. No, I'm asking yes, you for how why, why the sperm is staying there for 40 days. Muhammad says after 40 days Allah will give it a shape. Can you please click at my link? Okay, so the sperm after 40 days will receive a shape No, the uh, embryo <clears throat> What the embryo it's 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 a, it's a sperm Yes, but Allah Muhammad says <coughs> after it becomes a uh, uh, What's called a sperm after that it Allah will give it a, a shape hmm. So and, the uh, so the sperm after 40 days is going to have a shape, correct? No, not the sperm. It will be gone. What do you mean? It says here it's going. The sperm will go for forty days. It's still a sperm. Okay, can you click at my let link? Me, let me show you another one, another hadith. Maybe this one will explain it more to you. Read this yeah, one but, for me. Read this yeah, one. Can, read this one for me. Read this one for me. I I, I can't read. Well, are you are you, are you literate like your prophet? Come on. <laughs> read it. Allah the exalted and glorious has appointed an angel as the caretaker of the womb and he will say my lord it will it, it is now a drop of semen my lord it is now a clot of blood my lord it is now become a lump of flesh and when Allah decided to give it a final shape the angel says my lord will it be male or female or will it be an evil or a good person hmm. so what do you understand from this uh what what do you What's understand from this? What do you understand from this hadith? Mm. 
uh, I'm not following you. What is your point in this? Well, I don't know. You see, you keep saying to me, I'm lying to people. I say it's a, it's a blood. Look what it says here. The angel, he go inside the womb of the women. Yes. Okay. Are you saying to me that an angel will go inside a vagina? Uh, an angel is going to can't take a woman. No, it doesn't say that. What is what is so what it says? He is in is. charge of what? He's in charge of the womb. Yes. Okay, so he is in the in the door of the womb. Yes. So he's inside. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just the caretaker. I don't know. Okay, so he is the, 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 the doorkeeper for the womb. No problem. He's an angel. Now, this angel he asks Allah permission, he says, Okay, now it's a drop of semen. My yes. lord, now it's a clot of a blood. My yes. lord, now it became a lump of a flesh. Yes. And when Allah decided to give the final shape, the angel say, My lord, would it be male or female? What do you say about that? Uh, what's the problem here? The problem here, the last process is male or female. Mm. No. According to science, is it true no. that, that the last process is male or female? If it, uh, in the Quran it says that uh, th this is actually talking about the embryo, but in the Quran it says that after it uh, becomes Allah will decide it to be male or female, uh, he will uh, cause the bones to grow and clothe it with flesh. My friend, do you see it in front of you? It's the last process, he says, male or female. Last process, do you see it? Yeah, it's talking about the embryo, but in the Quran, after this. My friend, well, first of all, the Quran never mentioned the word embryo uh, anyway, but this is not a, a story now. Uh, do you see the word embryo there? Yes, but can you let me finish? I will talking? make you happy. Let us say in there, there's a word embryo. What is the last, uh, uh, the final shape? After he reached the final shape, he, Allah, he decided to give the final shape, right? And then the angel says, oh, Allah, male or female? Are you going to listen? It says here that Allah is here it, in the hadith. It's saying how Allah is making the embryo alive. But when you look at the Quran after this, uh, after these three stages, it's talking about how Allah is protecting humanity by Mm. Uh, and causing them, uh, you know, to be a let, human. Let me ask you. Uh, let me ask you. What is your education? Was what is what? your education? What do you mean? Because I noticed you have, you know, a lot. What is your education? What is your degrees? What, what to? Uh, I don't uh, know how you say English. Sorry. No, no. I'm saying your education. What is your education? It's my education, but uh, I don't know how to say it. What, what, like, what do you do? What do you mean? I'm young. You are young. How young? I'm uh, 17. You are 17? Swear by Allah you are 17. No. You are a liar. You are 30 something. No. Right. <laughs> so why you are lying? No, I'm not lying. Hmm. You are 17. Yes. Swear by Allah you are 17. I swear by Allah. That's what? And I'm 17. Okay. Is your mom there? No, your dad. No. Okay. Well, I want to. Why am I talk to someone who's seventeen? I thought you are a man. You are just a kid. No, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm almost. Uh, in a few months, I'm eighteen. So. Uh, few months. You know. Okay. Well, after a few yes. months, you call me. Okay. No, 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 Say no. Say hi no. to Baba. No. <laughs> now he became seventeen. All right. <laughs> Don't call me, don't call me. I, I will let you talk to me later. Not, don't call me. Let us see if this guy is trying to call. <coughs> Hello? Hello? Yes? Hello, could you hear me? Go ahead, we it's hear you. Please? Yes. Hi, I'm just calling up. Um, I have a question for you. Can you speak louder, please? Are you a Muslim? Me? Yeah. No, I have a Muslim friend. Okay. Oh, you you have a Muslim friend. You are not a Muslim. Yeah. What do you think about Muhammad? He's a filthy pedophile. That's what I think. Okay. And what's your friend here? I think about him. I think about him. My Muslim friend thinks um he's the most he's the most perfect 
example for human, like for for everyone. He, like he mm. says that he hasn't like. That's why Allah chose him to be the last prophet because he is the greatest example for mankind. Mm. So what what and do you want to say to me? I just want to say, can you like just prove that, like prove to my friend? I want to because I, I was telling about you, mm. um, that you know that you exposed Islam and all the all the um false um educations that Islam has. Mm. Can you just prove and show where Muhammad committed sin? Um, he had multiple wives, and um, he used to repent. I think like fifty or seventy times a day. He used to what? He used to repent. Repent fifty times a day. Yeah, well, is that true? Muhammad, he, he do not need to repent anyway. But uh, I will answer you. No problem. Anything Thank else? You. And also, um, Aisha, he, I told, I told, I told, I told her that. I told her that um, why would why would Muhammad marry a nine year old? I'm sorry, marry her at the age of six and have sex with a nine year old mm. when he could have when he could have um, adopted her. And she she said, "Oh no, back then it was okay to marry a child." Mm. Okay, all right, all right, my friend. I will, I will you. Thank you for calling. Uh, thank you for answering. Right. First of all, the Quran confirmed <clears throat> that Muhammad. Is a person who have a license to sin, open license to sin. And this is a license only uh, to Muhammad, not to anyone else. Chapter 48, verse number 2, it says, min dhambika wa ma ta Translation. The Muslims here, they try to cover the issue, so they say that Allah may forgive thee the fault of the past and the follow. We change the translator and you will see right away the translation change. Because Muslims always, as we said, they lie in order to cover what the Quran is saying. That's why we cannot take really a Muslim translation seriously. <clears throat> Look here, we just changed the translator, and all of them they are Muslims. Suddenly, it's not fault, it's a sin. Because fault, by the way, you do not need God to forgive you for your fault. Fault is something you did not do intentionally. And the Quran says that clearly, that if you do that, if you do something not intentionally it's not a sin it's not as an example if I'm driving my car and I hit a man and the man die this is not intention this is not uh, my intention is to go in the highway to go to work or home so I kill the man it's not a sin uh, the man he die yes uh, but it's I don't want to kill him so I'm not a criminal here so the Quran does not speak about Muhammad committing fault for fault is not to be committed and there, are, there is no need for forgiveness the Quran says in Arabic clearly the word them as we see in the front of us is what Allah will forgive him and them mean sin that's why it says forgive but here you will notice <clears throat> Muhammad he fabricated this verse and giving him a license giving himself a license that he is a person who have forgiveness for sin which is in the past and even which is in the future to come however that would be a contradiction with different verse in the Quran where Allah says to Muhammad ask Allah for forgiveness which mean he is a sinner but how you say to him in one verse I forgive you for the past and the and the sin to come and then you say to him in different verse ask for forgiveness <clears throat>
the Quran, you know, uh, is a kind of uh, is a, a book of, uh, uh, let us say, um, it's a mixed up book. And the more you read about it, the more you, uh, you know, the more you see that Islam is really funny and stupid. In the chapter of Muhammad, the chapter number 47, it says, So now, O Muhammad, that there is no Allah, save Allah. <laughs> the translation is funny. It doesn't say no Allah, save Allah. It says there is no God but Allah. I mean, the Muslims are funny, really. And ask forgiveness for the sin, which means your sin, and for the believing men and women sin. So Muhammad, Allah saying to him, Ask for forgiveness for yourself and for them. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ How in the other verse he says to him, I forgive the sin in the past to you, Muhammad, and the sin to come. And then he's asking here, saying to him, ask for the forgiveness of the sin you have now. I mean, you forgive him already for the past and the coming sin. So why he need to ask? So the Quran is a collection of stupid stories and, you know, uh, there's no point of it. Now about Muhammad repenting for 50 times or 60 times, I will save you the time. I will show you something even more, more, uh, more stupid. Why Muhammad is going to go to heaven? Is that because he asked Allah for forgiveness? Is that because Allah forgive him? Is that because of his good deeds? Is that because he is a prophet? Read carefully with me. Muhammad says, There is none amongst you whose deed alone would attain salvation. And actually, uh, if you read in Arabic, <clears throat> it doesn't say alone. The word alone is a false translation. It says who his deed. So there is no alone. In the translation, they are the word alone. This is, let us make an, a line. This is the sentence. Translation, they added the word alone, which is a lie. So here there is no <clears throat> alone. All right. There is none amongst you who his deed would attain salvation for him. So the deed will never attain or attain salvation to any Muslim. Now, one of the deeds is to ask Allah for forgiveness. This is deeds. We commit sin. Then, uh, because you asked for forgiveness, you did the good de de the good deed of asking for forgiveness. Allah forgive you. But just Muhammad said that you ask Allah for forgiveness, you don't ask Him for forgiveness. This is not what attain you to salvation. But why in the other verse we showed you in the Quran, Allah saying to him, "Ask for your forgiveness and the forgiveness of believers." <laughs> and then the companion they said to Muhammad, "Not even you," which means Muhammad, not even you. The Prophet said. Not even I, but Allah warps me in mercy and He grant me burden. So, deeds in Islam is a big fat lie. None of the deeds Muslims they do. Prayer is a deed, Hajj is a deed, kissing the black stone is a deed. Making donation to build a mosque is a deed, but none of your salvation have to do with the deeds. So why Allah is asking you for deeds? Hello. Uh, Christian Prince. Yes. <clears throat> uh, I already texted you about. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm a Christian, but. 
I have uh, I have a friend uh, to tell that if the can you go to the story uh, of Waraka and Waraka and Khadija? Okay, what about it? And then uh, if uh, there is a there is a sentence like uh, Waraka didn't finish yet about the his writing. I understand what. Uh, so when Waraka died, yeah. When Waraka died, he has now finished yet, right? Yeah. So, uh, what the source? What the source? Muhammad took gospel and Torah. All right. I would answer, my friend. That's all. Okay. Thank. You. All right. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Thank. Thank you, you a lot. This is the height in front of us, Sahih al Bukhari, and we show the reference so people will not say we are making things up. Hadith number 6982, book number 91, according to the reference. You will see here <clears throat> that the first one who introduced Muhammad to God is Waraka. The first one who said to Muhammad, You are a prophet, is Waraka. The first one who was able to to understand what the angel said to Muhammad is Waraka. Waraka is the founder of Islam, not Muhammad. You will see here that when Muhammad he went to the cave and the angel came and he squeezed him a tree time. We go from the beginning of the story because the story is really funny and proven to us Muhammad to be a false prophet. So the prophet he used to go to the cave and one day when he was there the angel came to him and asked him to read the prophets replied I do not know how to read the prophet added and now the prophet is telling the story to Waraka or to Khadija sorry the prophet added the angel cut me Firstly, he squeezed him so hard and pressed me so hard and I could not bear, bear it anymore, which means the guy almost died. Then he released me and he said to me, read. I replied, I do not know how to read. Whereupon the angel cut me again and he pressed me, squeezed me again until I could not bear it no more. And then he released me and he asked me to read. And I replied again, I do not know how to read. Here the story is proven to us that Muhammad from the beginning is a false prophet and Allah does not exist. Why? If Allah do not know that Muhammad do not know how to read, that means Allah is a false God. If Allah knows that Muhammad know not how to read, which means he knew that this guy cannot read, and he said to him, read, <laughs> that means Allah is stupid. If Allah saying to Muhammad, read, and he knew that Muhammad he do not know how to read, the only solution for this that Allah was making a miracle like Jesus said to the blind man see so he saw Otherwise, what the point of saying to him see and the guy is blind Jesus when he said to the one who cannot walk carry your bed and run He said to the guy first uh, That he forgive his sin the Jews they were wondering like how how the Messiah can forgive sin who he think he is So the Messiah he said to them what is easier for you to say? For me to say your sin is forgiven or to say to him carry your bed and run and walk and the guy who cannot walk all his life he walk Here we notice that Allah he said to Muhammad three times read I remember the read here is an order from Allah the angel is just saying what Allah said This is not the word of Allah. This is why this verse is exists in the Quran Remember the Quran's the Muslim they agree that everything in the Quran is Allah saying things So the one is talking here is Allah but the one is delivering the order <clears throat> is the angel so if Allah said to Muhammad read three times and the Muslims they claim that Muhammad cannot read and the, the story in front of us confirmed that Muhammad supposedly cannot read what kind of God he said to a man read he cannot read trust me the true God even if he said to a donkey read the donkey will be able to read in all languages so from the beginning the story is stupid then three times repeating the same 
question three times he's squeezing him which is very funny why you are squeezing a guy he just told you I can't read what the point of the squeezing squeezing first time second time third time to do what 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 the angel accomplished from squeezing Muhammad three times Muhammad don't understand the angel was not able to convince him to read and he was not able to read so what the point of this stupid then the story continue thereupon he cut me again third time three time Trinity Islam established by the number three Muhammad was activated by three squeezing not by one squeezing and here we have a question why Islam is stuck with the Trinity when Islam rejected Trinity why the angel cannot say to him read once Muhammad when he interplays he says assalamu alaikum three times Muhammad he pray he repeat the dua three times Muhammad he take an oath he repeat the oath three times Muhammad he says Adam won the debate he repeat the same word won the debate three times Muhammad he want to go to the bathroom he have to shake his penis three times Muhammad he want to use stones to clean his ass he have to use three three rocks Muhammad uh, he want to do ablution he have to wash his hand three times his face three times his nose blah 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 three times everything is three times a woman she is divorced from her husband if he divorced her three times that's final you take an oath on Islam you have to say it three times I mean what is left the whole cult is based on three times yet they are against they are anti trinity then we continue here <clears throat> after what uh, this happened the angel he told him read and he continued read in the name of your Lord who created you etc and exist blah 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 then you will see from the beginning he confirmed that he created you from a clot a congealed dead blood which is a stupid mistake repeated again again in the hadith in the Quran and this is chapter 96 verse number 15 and here you notice the Muslim they keep saying to us that the Quran never been changed but the first verse was given to Muhammad today in the Quran today is a chapter 96 that's mean there's no way don't call me Abu Qadir. don't call me don't make me block you as before I give you time that's it chapter 96 is the first verse in the Quran first chapter but not today today it is in chapter 96 who is the one allowed anyone to change the location if Allah gave it to Muhammad as first it should stay as first so this is a clear evidence that the Quran is not what Muhammad he have at his time at least then we will find something don't call me Abdul Qadir I will block you I will block you remember I blocked you before don't do that don't be a kid the squeezing story is a stupid then Muhammad he go to his wife and he said to her and you will notice here he returned with inspiration which means whatever he heard from the angel his neck muscles twitching with terror till he entered upon Khadija and said cover me cover me they covered him with fear was over and then he said oh Khadija what's wrong with me you will notice here that the angel of Allah when he entered to Muhammad he did not say to him assalamu alaikum And here we ask ourselves a very simple question why in this stage Muhammad God did not say assalamu alaikum because assalamu alaikum it is something Muhammad he start learning from the Jews when he lived between the Jews we don't see assalamu alaikum if you go to Jerusalem you will see the Jews saying salam alaikum literally this is a greeting of the Jews when the angel came to Mary in the Bible the angel said to Mary Shalom unto you Mary so the story here have no salam alaikum because Muhammad at this stage he is not living between the Jews he did not learn it yet and then when he told his wife what's wrong with me and you will notice the description that his neck masculars is twitching this is it's called a seizure people who have certain 
kind of illness uh, what they what they call it in English um, uh, tipsy what they call it in English Some, somebody remind me what the name I forgot the name really it's like you know uh, people they have a seizure and they uh, they fell down on the ground and their 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 muscles shrink their neck muscles specifically shrink so hard and they get hurt and they start shaking and they feel like you know, as, as if they are dying epilepsy epilepsy thank you that's exactly what muhammad is suffering from this guy he have a mental issue and this is based on the description of the muslim himself and muhammad himself <clears throat> And you will notice here Muhammad saying to Khadija, what's wrong with me? Why an angel of God, he visited a man and he told him, I have a message from your Lord, why he is terrified and why this is happening. And look what happened. Then he told her everything that happened to him and said, I fear something may happen to me. So Muhammad here, he feel that he's going crazy. Khadija said, never, but had the glad tidings. Khadija was sure Muhammad is not sure. Look at this. Khadija, who did not see the angel, she said to him, oh, this is good news. How? She should be worried about her husband. The guy is shaking, going crazy. And she said, no, this is good news. Okay. Then, uh, by, for by Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. Here we notice that Khadija wife is swearing by Allah. Why Khadija wife swearing by Allah? The Muslim they say that Khadija was a Nasara. And Nasara, according to them, is a Christian. In order for Muhammad to marry Khadija, if she is Nasara, he have to be Nasara too. Nasara for me is nothing but a Christian cult. It is not, it's like Jehovah's Witnesses. It's not really Christian, they are cult, you know, like they believe in Jesus, etc., but in their own wrong way. So here we notice that Khadija, who is Nasara, uh, she told him, Come with me. Khadija then accompanied him. To her cousin he is not really her cousin he is let us say uh, yeah like the son of uh, not direct uncle to her uh, ibn Nufal, ibn Asad, ibn Abdul Uzza, ibn Qusay. Waraka was the son of her paternal uncle i.e. her father brother who during the pre-islamic period become a Nasara not a Christian you see, they say here the word Christian, Nasara. The whole Quran never mentioned the word Christian. They mentioned the word Nasara. And he used to write the Arabic writing, and he used to write the gospel in Arabic. That is the Quran. And by the way, here we have many problems based on this hadith. If Waraka was writing the gospel in Arabic, that means there was a gospel which is non Arabic, and there's a gospel which in Arabic. You know what I mean? So, where is the gospel which was not Arabic, and where is the gospel which is Arabic now? How the Muslim they say that the Christians or the Nasara they corrupted their book. And Waraq al Nufal is the decent man who made Muhammad a prophet. And by the way, Muhammad, he claimed that Waraq will be in heaven. So at least at this point, Muhammad, he have a book, which is the book of, it's called the Bible, which is not corrupt. He have two copy of it. He have one in the language which is translating from, and most likely it's Aramaic. And he have the copy which is, the gospel in Arabic now for me and this is my own opinion if you read my book I have reference proving that Waraka must be the real father of Muhammad this is why anytime anything happened to Muhammad Muhammad you find him with Waraka 
So to make it simple, when waraqa die, read with me carefully. It says here. After a few days, waraqa died, and the divine inspiration has also paused for a while. Why waraqa died? Uh, Allah stopped sending messages. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Who is waraqa? So Muhammad becomes so sad, and we have heard that he intended several times to throw himself from the top of the high mountains. <clears throat> so Muhammad, because of this, there's two things happen, which is destroying his life. Waraqa died, and now there's no Quran. Obviously, Muhammad, he get his Quran from Waraqa. And obviously, Muhammad here was suffering badly because what he would say to the people, well, 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 I need Quran. The guy who gave me Quran is gone. And every time he went to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself down, Jibreel would appear before him and say, Oh, Muhammad, you are indeed Allah Messenger. In truth, whereupon his heart would become quiet and he would calm down and return home. And whenever the period of the coming of the inspiration used to become long, he would do the same, which means he tried to commit suicide. And here we have to question the stability of the brain of Muhammad. Why each time the inspiration stop or pause, the guy tried to commit suicide? You must be crazy. Why? So what? I'm a prophet of God. I should be wise. God, he sent his message when he wish, as he wish. So why if he stopped messages, I'm going to go to the top of the mountain and kill myself? And why the, the angel, he have to repeat the same story. He come to him, he says, we are a prophet, man. Believe me, you are a prophet. Don't do that. That's mean Muhammad he himself, he don't believe he's a prophet. You know what I mean? In order to do such a thing, that's mean I have to be suffering from mental illness. The angel came to me first time and he said to me, don't do that, you're a prophet. So he confirmed it to me, that's it. Okay, so why I do it again and again and again? It's like a child. Each time he needs some candies, he go to the top of the mountain, he said to mommy, if you don't give me candies, I'm going to throw myself. How this guy can be a prophet of God? So all the story of Muhammad is nothing but a fiction. And obviously Muhammad is suffering from mental illness. Actually, all stories all over the Quran and the Hadith proving that Muhammad is crazy. In the Quran, Muhammad was accused to be crazy six times, as I remember. Hello? Uh, hello, brother. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm so sorry for stopping you, but uh, I have a question there. If the Waraka uh, writing the Gospels, sorry. the Gospels said, uh, uh, sorry for stopping you. Okay. So, um, uh, the hadith say, Waraka died, and then uh, he he did uh, he stopped he stopped uh, writing the gospel, right? Mm. If he if he uh, wrote if he wrote the gospel, the gospel says Jesus died. Why in Quran we can uh, find Jesus not die? Hmm. Okay, well, uh, this, this is why, my friend, as I said, this guy is Nasara, he is not a Christian. For the Nasara, he did not die. Uh, the Nasara, they believe that the Messiah, he was, uh, because he is son of God, there's no way God, his father, will make him be tortured. So, what they believe that God, he replaced. The Messiah on the cross, and he made someone look like him, and this is exactly what the Quran is saying. So, um, so uh, Muhammad 
took from the Nasara. Yes, he, he, he uh, Muhammad. He never met Christians. Muhammad, he have Nasara around him only. Wow. There's no, there's no Christian around him. He have Nasara. That's why the whole Quran never mention anything except Nasara. There's, there's the people of the book in Islam is two Nasara and Jews. So Nasara is the is the the, the one he think they are the true Christians, and yeah. the Jews the, uh, he called them Yahud, which is a wrong name. Mm. Right. And then, so, uh, and then there is very uh, like after that. Let us say, there is like a, a anything have to do with God and prophets. Muhammad obviously is copying from others, but there is there is a chapters in the Quran is written by Muhammad. This is why they sound very stupid. You see, when uh, 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 if you buy my book, you know any of my books, and you learn. You know, you, you read my translation, or let's say that my writing in English, and then you buy Shakespeare. You will notice right away the difference, right? And how strong the language in Shakespeare book, and there is no way to compare my English to Shakespeare, correct? Yeah. So, if you are an Arab person, right away you will notice that the one who wrote the Quran, there's some chapters they have a good Arabic, and there's a chapters have a very horrible Arabic. It cannot be by the same writer. It's obvious. Mm. So. I believe that those who they have a good Arabic is what Waraka he wrote and the one who have a wrong language is what Muhammad he made and those are usually the one is speaking about any women she want to give her private part to Muhammad to sleep with him uh, Muhammad have fight with his wife they are silly they are stupid so the Quran yeah. is divided to uh, what is written by someone who have a good Arabic and someone who have very silly he have a flight of thoughts he have suffering from mental illness he is a stupid in the in organizing the ideas uh, uh, his language is bad his Arabic is bad and uh, you know we have tons of stories as an example if you know uh, the story, you know the story where, where Muhammad is said the, the uh, 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 Allah is the best of the creators you remember the story yeah Okay, the story is yeah, what? I, the guy. There is a guy. He is a, is an inscribed. He's a Christian. He was working for Muhammad, and uh, uh, some they say he is he is not a Christian. He is the cousin of uh, Uthman. Anyway, so uh, uh, the guy he uh, he was uh, he was writing for Muhammad Quran. Muhammad was telling him Quran, and then the guy he said. Uh, uh, Subhanallah, uh, 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 you know, Allah is the best of the creators. Muhammad, he said, write it there. Yeah. You know, to the barak Allah, so the guy, he said, but this is what I said. He said, yes, yes, uh, it came to me the same. <laughs> but he just said that, you know, Muhammad, he liked it. Yeah. He told him, add it there. He liked it. So the guy here, he decided to leave Islam. And this is, this is what the Muslim says in their books. He went and he said to himself, well, if Muhammad is a prophet, I am a prophet too because I am the one who said that first. So how does we become yeah. became Quran? So he, he discovered that he's a scam. So he ran away and he escaped and then he wanted to kill him and etc. And you know, he, he hid in the, in the house of Uthman, long story. So obviously Muhammad, he made Quran by his own and he uh, he take from people a sentence. As you, as you remember, uh, Omar, he said, my God agree with me in three. Some stories they say, Allah agree with Omar in ten. Some they say seven. Whatever it is, you will notice that Muhammad, he, uh, Omar, he says something. Uh, Muhammad, he say, he take it and he put it as it is in the Quran. So we can't say yeah. the Quran is made only from waraqa, but we yeah. can say the major information is coming from waraqa. And then after after that Muhammad he have no choice but to make his own Quran and he start collecting ideas from people around him but um, for example the Kaaba to pray to the Kaaba who is the one who came with this verse Omar uh, uh, the the hijab the chapter of the hijab who is the one who said that Omar uh, you know so like many things uh, uh, or the, the verse about uh, uh, Allah threatened the wives of Muhammad to behave otherwise he will divorce them and replace them by different women This is from Omar. So Omar he says something Muhammad he take it and he put it in the Quran 
and this is the same for anything there's tons like a story of Alexander the Great this is not from Muhammad yeah. this is uh, you know a legion written by a guy uh, uh, from Syria and he, he made a, a book it's called the book of the two horn and that he yeah. called he recorded Alexander the Great by by the person of the two horn that's why the Quran mentioned the man of the two horn now if you know if you ask yourself how Muhammad he claimed that God is speaking and then he called a guy the guy with the two horn shouldn't we know his name who is this guy the that guy with two horn since when we call a person by a horn yeah. you know what I mean the reason yeah, yeah. for that Muhammad is copying a legion it could be in a story fiction story and in the story it called him the man with the two horn so in chapter 18 verse number 83 it says and they are asking you about the Quran, the man with the two horn say I will tell you a story and then he starts telling the story which is very stupid story that the guy he went and he found the Sun sitting in the murky water blah 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 here this Quran the story is from the guy from Syria who wrote this story about a real person who is Alexander the Great like now today many many people write stories about someone is real Mm -hmm. but but the story itself is fiction full of fiction so uh, uh, Muhammad he took the story but he uh, he wrote it again in his own way in the Quran so this is the, the the chapter in front of us this is Muhammad talking yeah this is not Waraka uh, so I have one uh, question um, about the Azar. So uh, when Quran um, mentioned about the gospel and Torah, okay. he mentioned about the false uh, false story, you know? So it's like there is no Abraham there. Uh, it's like uh, just being Abraham and Ibrahim. So uh, where the Muhammad took that? As I said, everything Muhammad he have is taken from, from, from people around him, and uh, for for sure, the story about Abraham have two sources here, have the Nasara because they believe in Abraham and the Jews, same as Moses, same as Mary, same as uh, Isa, you know, and here you know this is why, and this is why we see the the name is Isa is coming because he took it obviously from the book of the Nasara, but he could not read it. If you remember in the Quran. The Quran did not call the the, the gospel uh, by a Hebrew name. He used the Injil, and the Injil is a Greek word. Right now, here we need to ask yeah. ourselves why Muhammad he said that Allah he sent down the Injil. The Muslim they say to us that. Uh, 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 you know, uh, Jesus was sent only to the Jews. Okay, how he is sent yeah. to the Jews, but yet Allah, he is using a Greek name. Allah is using a wrong name. No. You know what I mean? The, the Injil is a correct name, actually, but this is a Greek name. So how Allah, he used the Greek name. Yeah. I understand what this, is, this is this is this is uh, this is against the teaching of Islam because if Jesus is a, is a prophet was sent to the Jews Imagine, you know, mm -hmm. I am a prophet to the Jews and the name of my book in Japanese That doesn't make sense <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, well, I mean yeah, why yeah. is that? He, you know, this, this book is for the Jews not for the Greek So yeah, he's yeah. copying the Greek because this is the only name he knew he did not learn something else you No, know? so he have to put mm -hmm. the word as he, he have it in the translation from Waraka. You know what I mean? Mm. So yeah, yeah. the translation, the translation from the from Waraka, he use it, it says in Jil. And the same as Azar in the book of Waraka, it says Azar. So Muhammad do not know what Azar, he put it there Azar. And actually, me myself, I believe Muhammad he knew how to write, how to read. Yeah, I know about that. But the story when he said uh, uh in Arabic, he said, Ma ana biqari. He was saying what I should read, which is very normal. But the Muslims, they are stubborn. They say they do not know how to read. Why? Because the Quran says that Muhammad was illiterate. But the Quran doesn't say Muhammad is illiterate about writing or reading. 
but uh, about the book about yeah about not having a god the true god you know you, mm. if you don't have a true god then you are illiterate uh, uh, you know even the Quran says that I mean Muslims are really very naive uh, uh, so Christopher uh, about the illiterate what uh, what chapter what is what about the illiterate yeah, illiterate, uh, illiterate. About that. And if you go to chapter 2 verse number 78 as an example you will see the Quran tell us exactly what is the literate and among them is an illiterate folk who know not who know the scriptures not except heresy okay so as, yeah. as they think so who is the literate is the one who do not know the book anyone who don't have a book is illiterate That's and right. the Christian and the Jews are not the you see the uh, uh, the Quran did not say nowhere that the Christians is illiterate always is called people of the book if you read this chapter example chapter 3 verse number 20 you will see it says the following if they argue with you Muhammad say have surrender my purpose to Allah so have those who follow me and those who have received the scriptures and those who read not do you see it? Yeah. This is in read Arabic not. is illiterate. Read not is our so those who receive the script scriptures and those who read not read not what scriptures. So the Quran, you know, divide the people to two kinds of people: the one who is illiterate, and the one illiterate about God, don't have a book, and the one who have a book, and this is what the verse in front of us saying clearly. But. Yeah. When you speak to the Muslims, they are stubborn. It says in the front of us, <laughs> it says they are those who they have a book and those who they are unlearned. Mm -hmm. And this is coming from the Jewish style of teaching. The Jewish believe some we know we know that the Jews we believe in something or they say Gentile, right? Yeah. This is exactly what illiter and, uh, uh, illiterate mean and learned. So there is those who knows God and those the ignorant. We do not know God. As simple as that. That's not about writing and reading. Yeah. All right. Anything else, my so friend? It, it's like the same story with um. Uh, if the Muhammad cannot read and then cannot write, uh, when Muhammad died, uh, he just told um his friends to taking uh material writings. Right. 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 No, no, they, uh, obviously Muhammad, he know how to write, how to read. This is, but uh, I mean, uh, as I said, when I debate with Muslims, I debate him with what they believe in, not what I believe in. I believe Muhammad knows how to write, but as long as they decide uh, to be stubborn and to say no, okay, go with you. That will make it even easier for us to get him busted. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very okay. much, my friend, for calling. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We will not take more calls no more we are done for now uh, as you see you know whatever we go in this book this book is stupid and doesn't, doesn't make sense scientifically wrong historically wrong uh, grammatically wrong arabic wrong pronunciation wrong uh, once he say jibril once he say gabriel uh, once he say ibrahim once he uh, once he say abraham i mean uh, uh, when he say his name is muhammad when he say his name is ahmad when he say his name is mustafa uh, muhammad the Quran is missed up book. If you ask any Muslim, what Musas mean? The Quran says Musas. What Musas mean? They do not know. Okay. What Israel mean? They don't know. Who's Israel? They don't know. What Isa mean? They don't know. What Abraham mean? They don't know. Okay. What Jibreel mean? They don't know. What Allah mean? They don't know. So what do you know? Because all the cult of Islam is a theft. All of it. It's a collection. It's like somebody he went to a museum, and this museum he have uh, uh, items from many, many centuries, from many nations. Collection of items from the Roman, from the Persian, from the the Jews, uh, uh, from the Japanese, from the Chinese. So he go inside the museum, and then he tried to make it that this is all belong to him, but it doesn't match. You know what I mean? And then Muhammad suddenly he is a doctor. He knew how the baby is made. 
Muhammad he knew uh, uh, about uh, astronomy. Muhammad he knew about how the earth is made, how how the mountains is is made. I mean, suddenly this guy he is he's he's an, he knows everything. And the funny, uh, which I found it very funny about Muhammad, which I'm happy that he do that, he volunteer to be stupid, which make it a lot easier for us to get him busted, because I, I'm I'm really so happy that Muhammad he is not the person who was so quiet. This guy he talk a lot, and the more he talk, the more he do poo poo. As an example. <clears throat> The Quran says that Zul Qurnayn, the man with the two horn, he found the sun sitting in the murky water. The Muslim they try to fabricate and they say, "Oh no, no, this is Alexander the Great. He thought the sun looked like it is sitting in the murky water. He thought." Then Muhammad he talk, and Muhammad when he talk, he get the Abdul busted. So the Abdul they spent a lot of money making videos to defend this issue. But then Muhammad, he cannot stop doing poo, poo Look what he said. I was sitting behind Allah Messenger, S-A-W-S, this is like a PhD, you know, from Allah, who was riding a donkey while the sun was sitting. He said, do you know where this set, talking about the sun? I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. Here we go. The Muslim, they associate the knowledge of their God with the knowledge of Muhammad. He said, it's set in a spring of warm water. Now, how we can, if we are Muslims, defend Muhammad now? Here we go. Muhammad explained the verse, and he said, the sun is set in the murky water. How a Muslim can say, so they will say to you, oh, I don't, I reject this hadith. I don't like it. No, this is bad. This is the only way. The same as the, this is why today we said we don't accept hadith. But do you accept Quran? Quran confirmed this. Which is the Quran says that he found it sitting in murky water and he found next to it people who live there. We have a guy there. He's calling me liar. I don't know. My friend, why you don't call me and get me busted? You see, I will give you an exception. If you are a man enough, who you call me liar, if you are a man enough, and your sperm coming from your backbone, as your prophet described, call me and be a man. What do you think, guys? Do this guy, even my voice is gone, and really my voice is tired, you can tell. <clears throat> do you Do you think you have the courage to call me? Are you the are you the Nigerian boy who claimed that he knows how to write, how to read? And we get him busted? Are you that one? You know, I love African people, but I noticed that the Nigerian Muslims are the most corrupt, hypocrite Muslims ever. Until now, I did not receive a call from a Nigerian Muslim. He don't lie from the, from the A to the Z. The first thing a Nigerian Muslim he will say to you when he call you, I don't accept this hadith. I don't believe in the hadith. But they believe in the hadith. They are Sunni. They are Sunni. They believe in the hadith. To avoid the spanking because of the hadith, they say we don't believe. Taqiyya. And then they start fabricating meaning and then we say okay can we show you the interpretation for the verse they don't want the interpretation so they don't want the hadith they don't want the interpretation of their scholars they don't agree with any scholar it's just to protect islam but by doing that they got themselves busted what is left of islam if you don't do that if you don't accept the hadith that's mean you reject your prophet teaching if you make your own interpretation for the quran that's mean you are refusing all the interpretation even by Muhammad himself and you claim that you know better Do we have any Abdul? Only Abdul We gave enough time to 
the Christians to call if there's a Muslim wanna call us Abdul except the guy who is 17 years old kid anyone if you are a Muslim and you want to leave Islam you can send me a message as many of you do always actually uh, uh, a good uh, group of Christians here they created a, a, a group uh, to speak to those who like to speak in in that group so I receive messages and if I ask the person do you like me to make you join this group to teach you the Bible etc if you like uh, you know he go there so if you are a Muslim you like to call me uh, uh, if you are shy or let's say afraid to speak in public to say I'm leaving this time I understand you can text me and I will not mention anything about you anyone and you know I'm really happy that the Lord blessed us with too many uh, Muslims who left Islam in in the last few months I don't know I, I don't know I can't even remember how many too many um, so I'm really happy that in the year 2018 it was very fruitful the tree uh, of teaching was doing great and a lot of Muslims leaving Islam and I pray actually we are doing good already we are just 15 days in 2019 and we have many people left Islam right on air in this program you can watch them in the previous videos so we are doing good actually we are doing great but it's going to be greater if all of us we copy those videos and share them everywhere and people watch them and people leave Islam not everyone leave Islam is going to call many they leave I mean those videos are really scary there's no way a human being you see at the end of the day a Muslim is a, is a, is a, is a, is, a, is a person like us and there's many of them they are good people they are they have dignity they have honesty not everyone is like this guy from Nigeria who called me who tried to lie every two seconds there's many of the Muslims they are coming from good families they have good uh, dignity they have they have honesty they will not accept to lie to themselves because when you lie you're not lying to me you're lying to yourself what the point when you say to me uh, uh, the Quran doesn't say the sun set in murky water but you know the Quran saying that it's in front of your eyes that's mean you're lying to yourself. Okay, lie to yourself. Uh, are you hurting me by doing that? No. Actually, you are hurting Islam. Any Muslim who watch you saying to me, the Quran doesn't say that, inside him he will say, here we go. We are Muslims, we are a bunch of liars. So even when you lie to defend Islam, you are helping me to make more people leave Islam. Even when the Muslim, they make false miracles about the Quran. Actually, the false miracle of the Quran, the science miracle, it's making now many people leave Islam. Because if this religion is a good religion, why in the world I need to fabricate lies to make the Quran fit with science? Which means you make Islam more ugly now. You see? <clears throat> Me as a Christian, if a scientist, he come to me and he says, the Bible says something against science. As an example, Mary, she gave birth to Jesus. Shall I fabricate a story and says the Bible doesn't say that? Or I say, yes, I believe in that. No, I say, I believe in that. It's against science. It is a billion times against science. A Muslim, he don't do that. He's a coward. So in order to avoid what is written in his books, he fabricated stories, he changed the meaning of the words. He gave false translation to make it fit with science. We Christians, we will never do that. Because either you are a believer or you are a liar. Why you want to change the meaning of your book and why you are ashamed of your book? That's mean you are not you are not a believer. Islam is dead already. And the biggest sign of the death of Islam is them saying I don't I don't accept the hadith. Oh, I don't accept the Quran. Oh, I don't accept the tafsir. So what do you accept? I don't care if science agree that women she can give birth or not because we believe this is a miracle. This is above nature. This is why it's not normal. 
Who said that this is normal? Nobody. But we believe in miracles. This is not science. This is totally one billion time against science. I am not ashamed of my book. And I will never lie about my book. And my book is not a book of science. Never was and never will be. Because it's not meant to teach me about science. It's meant to teach me about God. When God, he speak to me about how created the heaven and the earth in the book of Genesis. Do you think really God, he really taught us everything about how we, imagine if God, when I just write, he will give us a book about how the mosquito is, is made, is going to take maybe, maybe 20 books. Just a mosquito alone. An eye doctor to be special in eye, in, in eye he studied hundreds of books to be professional, to be called an eye doctor. Just for the eye, not the whole human being. So, if God want to explain to us how and what he created, how many million books he need to give us? Imagine how great this world is. The earth, all of it, is not even a dust compared to the galaxies around us. So the book was not meant to be a book of science. But because the Muslims are bankrupt and they notice their weakness and because they are following satanic religion which is allowing them to lie it's legal it is lawful in Islam to lie to promote your cult this is why you will see Muslims have no hesitation for a second to lie in order to make you convert to Islam because for them Muhammad he justify lying because supposedly your intention is good yes you are lying but your intention is good. Muhammad, he said you can lie in three cases to your family, your friends, and to your enemy. Who is left? And how he justified the lying? It's your good, in good intention. But there's no good intention in lying. Lie is a lie. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to you, okay, what if your wife, she asks you if she is pretty or not? What you will say to her? You will say to her, she's ugly. Well, if she is ugly, why you marry her? Because you are a liar. Maybe you married her like Khadija. Muhammad, he married a woman. She is in, in the age of his mother because she's rich. So if Khadija, she asked Muhammad, am I pretty? Muhammad, he says, sure, you're so pretty. I love your money. Look at your bracelet in your hands. Right, and you notice here the huge difference between the teaching of Muhammad and the teaching of Christ. Christ, he said, even you don't take an oath, you don't, you don't even swear. Either you say nay, nay, or yay, yay. That's it. Muhammad, you can take an oath, you can swear falsely, you can lie as much as you want, and all is justify as long you have the intention. What is your intention to defend Islam? You can lie. This is what they call taqiyya. Taqiyya. So how in the world we can believe Muhammad is a prophet? Stupid teaching, false teaching, crazy teaching. The sun set in a spring of murk murky water. I mean, I don't know what, what we can say. Do we have any Muslim? A Muslim saying to us, he is look, look, this is a Muslim praying to us. He said, I hope you will catch herpes. My friend, the one who catch herpes is the wives of Muhammad, and we can prove it easy. Why the wives of Muhammad they have a yellow water and you have yellowish water uh, blood coming from their vagina? Do you want to show you? You are uh, you are saying talking of, you're talking about uh, uh, uh uh, uh, you are praying look even their prayer is evil look at their prayer he don't say me the Lord of the guide you know I pray that you will get herbus
Read with me carefully. One of the wives of Allah Apostle joined him in a tikaf, and she noticed blood and yellowish discharge from her vagina. Mr. Herbis, as long as you are a specialist and look like you have experience with it, can you explain to me why the wife of your prophet she have a yellowish leak? Can you explain to us what is that? What is the disease exactly her private is suffering from? She is sleeping with who? She is sleeping with Muhammad. <laughs> sleeping with Muhammad. Is this Christian prince the liar? Like this guy, he called himself a Christian killer. killer. <laughs> Christian killer. <laughs> hey, you want to kill me, my friend? Let me call you. <laughs> Christian killer. <laughs> yes, sir, come on, killer. Look like you're a potato. I thought you are a man, it turned to be a goat. And you call yourself Christian killer. Get lost. Let your mom call me. I want the man of the house to speak to me. And here actually, you notice how savage the ones around Muhammad. I mean, why in the world this is published in the internet and why it's published by books and why it's published by the house of Muhammad why the wives of Muhammad going around and say what happened in their between their legs I mean what is the business of anyone to know what happened to the vagina of this woman Somebody called CNN and informed CNN that Michelle Obama she have a yellowish discharge. We need to inform you that one of the wives of the Prophet, her name is Michelle, she have a yellowish discharge. And now the news agencies will spread. The, at the time of Muhammad, there's many. Uh, after 300 years, there's many agencies open. There's the agency, it's called Agency of Sahih Bukhari, Agencies of at Agencies of Sahih Muslim. I mean, many of them. So now the whole news agency starts spreading. We, 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 the wife of the Prophet, she have a yellow discharge. Why we need to do that? What we learn from this, except that Muhammad obviously is suffering from sexual disease. I don't support anyone, my friend. I support my Lord. Trump, for me, I vote for Trump because he's better than the rest. Because he hire Christian judges. That's for me is a victory. Now, the Supreme Court is not controlled by the liberals. That alone is, is a victory. The rest, uh, you know, uh, Trump is, you know, is the same as the rest in many things. Guys, Aramaic. Aramaic Prince, I don't want to see I piss on Allah. Uh, don't say that, otherwise I will block you. Speak as mature, or I will block you. Anyone he say I want to piss on Allah, I want to piss on Muhammad, we will block you. Don't speak silly. Speak as mature person, because saying that will not make you look better. And we are debating religion here. We are not here to insult and call names. When I say this is stupid, I mean it is stupid. But there's no need to say I piss on Allah. And what does that mean? So anyone will use a bad language in the text, please admin block him. We give you time out, first time warning, and the admin will explain to you why. Second time you do it, we block you. We don't want to see such a silly language in the text. We are not Muslims. Thank you.
Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Any beautiful Muslim or handsome Muslim want to call us? This is the only religion allow Muslim men to take hair from their faces, forbid Muslim women from taking hair from their faces. So we have to switch handsome and beautiful. In Islam, when you speak to women, you have to say handsome women and beautiful man. Pretty man. I never heard of such a religion, man. The woman, she can take hair from her face, and if she do so, Allah, he curse her. I mean, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with this guy, Muhammad? He like to have a woman, she have a, she have a beard. Anyone? All right, I think we have done uh, enough for today. I hope you guys you have a good time. Uh, I, I I open like this late uh, for me now. It's three thirty four a.m. in the morning, and I will go back to work in my book. And after I feel like I am out of battery, and then I will sleep if I can sleep. So I want to say thank you for being here. And if you like to learn more about Islam, feel free to read my books. Uh, and actually, we are working. I'm working right now in my book, Deception of Allah translation to the Malay language which in Indonesian and Malaysia they can understand it and almost ready so I hope soon we will have it published and people they can have it um, to find my books you can always search in Amazon whatever your country is Germany amazon.de uh, France uh, Amazon France uh, USA amazon.com depend so search for Christian Prince you will find the list of my books and don't forget please for those who got my books to write an honest review don't say it's fantastic unless it is fantastic we are not Muslims we don't fabricate we should not lie say things as it is be truthful be honest Muslims they write worst review for books they never even read just because it's written by Christian Prince but those review doesn't hurt me it is the opposite because if a Muslim he gave me a good review, that's mean my book is horrible. If the Muslims one day said to Christian Prince, God bless you, Christian Prince, you are a good guy, we like you, we love you, this means there is something really, really wrong, seriously wrong with the Christian Prince. As simple as that. Don't listen to me. Don't learn from me. And don't believe me. If the Muslims like what I do because obviously that is a clear sign that I am a person who is not teaching the truth the more they are upset from me the more I am a truthful if they are happy you know if this is how you scale it I don't see another scale uh, you know when 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 a religion believe in evil start praising you obviously you are evil too as simple as that we cannot have different explanation so i want to say thank you for being here may the lord bless you and until we see you soon again christ is lord and islam is false and see you